Dart Zone Scorpion Review. Included is the blaster itself, the chain, um, the ammo, and the instructions. This blaster runs on six AA batteries. After you remove these two screws, you can lift up the tray and place the batteries in. Start off with the firing test because it's really impressive. So yeah, keep in mind that's unmodified. That's in stock form running on alkaline st standard AA batteries. I'll briefly cover the cosmetics, but there really isn't much to go over. Um, up front is a rotating turret thing. This thing does spin around when you're firing, as you can see, but there's just one barrel in the center that uh, all the darts are flying out of, so the spinning is just cosmetic. Right here is a carry handle that does pivot. This doesn't really perform or do anything else. It's just to, to balance the blaster with. Up here is the little latch to um, disconnect and connect the belt. You press that green thing in and then pull upward, and then it unlocks, and now you can take off the belt. It is a little bit cumbersome to get the belt on and off and it's not particularly fast so if you can I would recommend loading while the belt is actually attached. On this side here is the on off switch. This actually turns on the flywheel so they start spinning. Unlike the Hasbro blasters this just has an on off button. It doesn't have a rev trigger so once you turn it on the flywheels are just going to be going creating that noise um, but they're going to be at max RPM all the time sort of like the old barricade. Getting to the grip, it's not particularly comfortable, but that might just be because I'm an adult, an adult. I'm a big person. I don't have particularly fat hands, but they are very lengthy, and it's mostly the width that's gonna interfere. I know some 12-year-olds have fatter hands than me, and so they're not gonna be able to fit their hands in there comfortably. I found it works best if I just hide my pinky and then operate it with the other three fingers, just like this. This gap is simply too small this way for me to comfortably fit my hand in there without cramming it in there, along with this width of this thing. I can only put in a couple fingers here. Overall, the cosmetics are just overly complicated for my taste. They do look really cool when they're operating, but they're not particularly function-based um, or like performance-based. It's mostly to look cool while it's shooting. Going over loading, you just pressure feed the darts into the front of the belt thing here. Like I said, you just push this button and open this guy, and then you can slide the belt right over and drop it in, and it locks into the little teeth. You shut that, and you're good to go. So I'll show you the chrono readings. 94, 107, 99, 108, 107, 108, 107. Now I'm going to shoot some regular elite darts. 101, 90, 99, 93, 100. So I chronoed with the ammo included with this blaster and with the elite darts because it does function with nerf elite darts, but it doesn't function flawlessly by any means. Uh, the length of the elite darts does create small jams up in this region because the, the dart does run into the plastic right here. So you've seen it fire, you've seen the overview, getting to my opinion. Overall, I'm in love with this blaster. For not being modified and coming right out of the box with stock alkaline batteries, the performance is phenomenal. It's actually unbelievably ridiculous. Hasbro would never release something with this power right out of the box because they would have lawsuits out the yin yang if they did um, for kids hurting other kids, shooting each other in the face, whatever. This company obviously has the balls to do this and it's definitely beneficial to those who don't want to modify other blasters. Keep in mind belts are not the most efficient way to use ammo. Magazines are much more beneficial because you you can quickly switch through preloaded mags unless you buy a bunch of these belts. Even if you have a bunch of a bunch of preloaded belts, loading these belts on and off of this blaster is not particularly quick and quite cumbersome. But the fact that it's shooting over 90 feet per second out of the box is absolutely ridiculous and definitely worth buying just for that fact because it shoots stupidly hard. So if you're the type of person who doesn't want to modify your blaster or you play in stock only wars that you're not allowed to modify blasters in, bring this and just that's a big middle finger to the rules because it's shooting like a modded strife with no mods whatsoever. So if you can handle the belt and the awkward ergonomics, definitely check out this blaster from Dart Zone. That's the review. Thanks for watching. It shoots pretty well. Um, without completely overhauling it, you're not going to get that much better performance, so I just pretty much left it stock. Paint job is very basic. The Rebel line does not have very detailed shells.